Well, good afternoon, folks. The real Captain Kirk here. It's the 14th of October, 2023 here. We're live from one Bethlehem Plaza. Uh, hard to say happy here today in light of all the world events and the, you know, uh, kind of dark days that we're in here. So again, prayers for everyone suffering through these uh, events. Again, uh, also getting dark here at the North Pole. So as it gets uh, darker and darker, it gets colder and colder, obviously. So we're starting to see the polar vortex emerge. So again, it's a typical event in the fall that uh, starts us to strengthen. Again, it's a polar vortex over the North Pole that uh, when it's symmetrical like this, tends to keep the cold air generally bottled at the North Pole. And we're seeing that now when it becomes more ragged and uh, breaks apart in vortices. Uh, you can have some of those cold intrusions head to south into the mid-latitudes uh, across the Northern Hemisphere. One factor, again, uh, obviously at play here is just a very strong El Nino. It looks like it's going to peak here uh, uh, in this fall, mid, mid fall time, November, December time frame, and then begin a pretty rapid weakening. Uh, this will be important because, uh, again, a strong El Nino is very different than a weakening El Nino through the winter season. So, again, uh, we do believe this will play a role. We can already see some colder weather, colder temperatures actually uh, below the subsurface equatorial Pacific starting to bubble up in this very warm area of very warm water temperatures. So again, this will play a role as we go into our winter season. Thought we'd talk snow today here. Again, not much out there right now. Only about 3% of the country has snow on the ground. The high elevations of the Rockies, Wyoming's uh, part of Utah. Last year, a little bit there in uh, northern Minnesota. But uh, again, not much. But again, something we will be talking about in the uh, weeks ahead here. Again, again, looking at the six-day snowfall outlook. Well, a little bit more there in Wyoming, uh, Colorado, not much here in the sixth day, maybe a little more in week two as we get into late October here. So the snowfall indexes, again, some of the charts and data will be showing as we go through the snowy winter season ahead. Again, we do expect it to be the snowiest in 10 years. Looking at U.S. tornadoes here, again, we added some more across Florida here, sadly, uh, uh, this past week. So again, we're at about 1,346 tornadoes. That's 23% more than last year, 10% above average, most in four years. Unfortunately, with El Nino and the subtropical jet stream we expect in the pattern next year into spring, we do expect the most active tornadic season in 13 years next year. So again, something to prepare for if you live in the deep south and more tornado-prone areas. Hurricane season has not responded to a typical El Nino. You wouldn't ordinarily expect this. We did expect it to be an above-average season. This is a way above-average season. We have 19 systems, probably going to be adding 20 Tammy here, uh, most likely soon out in the Western Atlantic. We'll see about Tammy. Tammy's going to take a little more southern route and uh, could get into the Caribbean, and we'll see if it impacts the U.S. But every metric pretty much is above average for the Atlantic basin. So, again, a very active season for sure. One thing that hopefully is not going to be an active season is uh, the flu season. Um, last year we had an epic start here in late November with a peak uh, that we haven't really seen in many decades. Uh, this year, a slower start. That was a typical trend that we had in Australia. Expect that uh, to continue here in the U.S. So instead of a November peak for flu, um, we expect it probably more in the late January, early February, more typical time frame. We look at last week here, week ending here today, 14 October here across the U.S. Uh, it was a cooler week, uh, one degree cooler than last year, cools in four years, still 15th warmest of 38 years. But again, haven't said cooler trends for very frequently here this fall. 46% wetter than last year, what is in four years, ninth, what is in 38 years. So above average, haven't said that very much as well. So again, cooler wetter trends are good for retail seasonal sales. Uh, so some uptick in activity, uh, again, certainly maybe the Northeast, some maybe the West a little bit. Canada, very warm. Number one, warmest in 38 years. Also wet, helping to put out some of these fires. Um, UK, warmest in six years. Europe, number one, warmest in 38 years. India, number one, warmest in 38 years. Australia, the big thing there is just very dry. They're having a, one of the driest starts in the, over 30 years. Uh, so to their spring. We look at these uh, fall temperature trends. Again, these are fall temperature trends versus last year. Here in the U.S., we see that, um, again, very warm fall. It's been... Um, Third warmest fall in 38 years here in the U.S., uh, 1.3 warmer than last year. A brief cool spot here this past week, again, around Columbus Day. Starting another warming trend here. Now, this chart is the, the bars are year-on-year -year trends versus a year ago, how our retail customers would look at it. So every degree hotter or cooler, there's about a 3% increase in apparel sales. And unfortunately, when you see those big bars up here this coming week here, where it's 7.5, 8, 10 degrees warmer, you're down 20, 30% in those apparel sales. So maybe another bright spot as we get out toward uh, late October into early November. And then uh, again, a bigger warmer trend as we go into the Thanksgiving weekend. Look at this week here, week ending 21 October here in the U.S. We're about 3.8 warmer than last year, warmest in six years, ninth warmest in 38 years. So that cool trend last week is a generally a warmer trend this week. Um, Cooler spot, again, versus averages in the southeast Florida. They'll take it after some extreme heat and all the activity with the tornadoes. 
But if we look at the maps first last year, they're a central part of the, again, most of the country is just warmer than a year ago. Rainfall uh, up about 34% versus a year ago, wettest in three, 11th, still 11th driest in 38 years, so below average. Uh, some rain there in the mid-Atlantic, uh, immediate east coast. And if we look at next week here, again, the last uh, week of the retail third quarter, their, their quarter ends here, 28 October. It's, uh, again, warmest trend, 0 0.7 warm in last year, warmest in seven years, eighth warmest in 38 years. If there's a bright spot, again, versus a year ago, it'd be the northeast. Uh, while we're a little bit below average, it's quite a bit cooler than uh, the warm weather we had last year. Central, yes, not so much. Again, just very, very hot from Texas to Nebraska. Precip trends are again down, 49% drier than last year, dries in 15 years, seventh dries in 30, 38 years. So dry, again, they'll take it. Farmers need these drier trends here to get the corn crops and soybean crops out of the ground, again, as they start their harvest season. And we just aggregate these two-week wool trends here again. So we see generally, if you're looking for a more favorable spot for Cooler seasonal merchandise sales, you might say it's the southeast U.S., maybe Alaska and parts of central north Europe, um, the rest of the world uh, on the pretty warm side. So map, inset left are the trends versus average. So folks, we hope to have a great week ahead here. Uh, we will be back here again this time next week. Mm -hmm.